Hey everybody, we're here at Swamp Fest Eve Friday, and we're here with none other than Raddy Maddy himself. And I just wanted to have a conversation about breaks, to be honest with you. Uh, we, let's, let's break the tension, you know? We're, oh, he did it. <laughs> Shall we break the ice? Please. <laughs> let's just break right into Give it. Give me a break. Yeah. <laughs> All right. No. All right. How have you ridden brakes your whole entire BMX? Yeah. There were there were a few moments when I was growing up where I thought I'd have like a confidence boost if I took my brake cable and my brake lever off and I'd go ride street, and it kind of gave me this like fearlessness, but also I couldn't do fubinus. So it, I realized how much I love them. Yeah. And I don't ever want to stop riding them. So you've always been a brake yeah, guy. Yeah, always. I'm the exact same way. Yeah. And I'm sure you have people who are like, well, why don't you do take your brakes off or do a video without brakes or whatever. It's like, well, then I lose all of my tricks. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, I would say that no one has ever asked me to do something like that because I think it's, if you know me at all, they're like, oh, no, you just ride brakes. Yeah. That's just what it is. And if I couldn't do a fufanu, I don't think I would really want to be on a bicycle. Yeah. Fufanus are so fun. So... How long into riding was your first back rail? Oh, good question. Wow. Yeah, good questions. <laughs> Thank you. How long into riding was first back rail food? Wow, let's see. Probably four or five years, but it wasn't like a very big one. Maybe a yeah. couple feet. Yeah. Yeah, probably, yeah probably, probably four or five years. So pushing 19, 20. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. What's your ideal brake setup? Oh, like uh, parts? Yeah, like uh, ones that work. <laughs> I honestly don't have a preferred setup. I've been I was running the Evo 2.5s for a couple years, and just built up the frame you see behind me, and had a little bit of an issue with the the clearance of the brake arms. And so, in all honesty, I'm not very good at working on brakes. I don't enjoy it. It stresses me out. I don't fully understand the springs and all that stuff. So, SCG Steve, shout out to him. Thank you so much. He noticed that there was a lot of rubbing going on and creating more resistance. So he literally just popped off his brakes and gave them to me. So the full setup. So they are the, I want to say they're Diatech Ombres. Yeah, let's do a brake check. Yeah, they're the, <laughs> they're the Diacomp Ombre, Diatech, Diacomp, I don't know. Um, so I'm first time ever running silicone pads. They squeaked all hell like the geese are being released, but you know what? It's all good. It makes me stop, so that's all I care about. Yeah. What's your lever? Lever, uh, I believe it's an Odyssey. Yeah, you got mono lever. Yeah, mono lever. Medium. And Do you prefer the uh, medium? I don't have a preference. I'm kind of one of those guys where if I get it, I get it, and then I kind of work around it. But that one is pretty ideal for me. It yeah. doesn't get caught in any parts of my pants or caught on my skin or anywhere else, so it's pretty good. I feel like you get a lot of leverage with that one, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. Oh, here's a good one. One or two fingers for foofs, and, or just in general. So one finger for stalls all day, but when I'm like cruising, I do pointer finger. It's very strange. I had no idea that I did this until I saw a video of myself a long time ago. When I'm cruising up to something and checking stuff out, I usually do one finger, pointer finger, and then when I go to do a stall, it's always the middle finger. Always. Even like a back rail. Always middle finger. Wow. One finger forever. I can only do like big stuff. With two? My mentality will not let me do one. I have to use two. And my mentality doesn't like to let go of a pivotal grip point. Yes. So I need like these points. If I take off another finger, I, I feel like I'm not holding onto a bar anymore mm -hmm. and that I might just pull everything through it. So I do the I do the one finger. Been there too. Yeah. I'm on uh, wedge foofs. Okay. One finger. Yeah. Wedge foofs are one finger. Yeah. Quarter foofs are two. <laughs> just because of the exact thing yep. you're talking about. Yep. Uh, so I noticed you don't have pegs. Yeah. Do you always not ride pegs? Is that a brake thing? It's kind of, a, it's not a brake thing. It's just a... Just a general thing. I've uh, experimented with pegs back in the day. Recently experimented with them a couple years ago. I decided to throw them back on, do a couple handrails, which is completely out of my wheelhouse of comfort. But I grew up riding trails. And anytime I would put pegs on to go ride my mini ramp, I would leave them on and go ride trails. And I'd have like a weird issue and I would slam and I'd cut the back of my leg. You know, I'd try to get out of something and a peg would all of a sudden be in my face. Like there'd be something going on where I wasn't too familiar with the pegs sticking out. So I try them here and there, but realistically, I'm used to no pegs. So it's just more of a comfort thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's cool. And do you think that that helps lean into the brake stuff? 
sometimes? No. No? No. Uh, adding, adding a peg or two doesn't affect how I ride really at all. I mean the lack of them. Oh, the lack of them? No, I don't think it affects anything. No. At least for me personally, it's fine. Sometimes I think my setup is a little too light and I want to like pack some cement in the seat tube or something just to get a little more weight because from how we used to ride with heavy frames, so it's pretty good. How old are you? I am 35. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so your last, vi not, was it, was it your it's last? Like, it's like the only video. The RBMX one yeah. came out and there was a lot of heavy, heavy brake moves in yeah. there. What? Are you constantly like looking for a brake trick in a setup or is it just the setup dictates and if a brake trick is there you're doing it? How does your mindset Kind work? of that. Yeah. If the setup calls for it, it's there. Um, I tend to, I guess I kind of have like a brake mindset so I'm looking at things like that. But I've also been in situations where friends of mine who know how I ride, they will say, hey, why don't you try this because you, you do this and I don't even see it. And then I do it and it works out. Yeah. So. There, there's always going to be brake moves in any edit that I do and anything that I ride, and it's not necessarily a main focus. It's just kind of a, well, I love it. So here we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, I have this thing where I show up at a skate park and I just look for the fufanu. Yeah. Are you that way? Sometimes, I mean, the fufanu is going to come no matter what. So I try to show up and go, shut up, fufanu. <laughs> shut up. It's like always on my shoulder talking to me, and I'm like, you can be quiet for a moment. And then I go ride, and then all of a sudden it inevitably comes out after like the little foot jam, and then you go up, oh, Fufanu, of course I did it. So, yeah, it's never never the first go-to, though. I always am looking for the back rail. Yeah. Where are my Fufin? Which Where's yeah. the rail? We're just, just going to happen. Yeah. And then it happens in the first 10 minutes, yeah. and I'm like, all right, we're done. Yeah, we're done for we the day. We can have fun. <laughs> Worrying's over. Yeah. Uh, so, that one setup where you basically did a three-tap off of a roof. Yes, the the two seventy foot. That was that was a foot though. That, that yep. was definitely 100%. a foot. So what? Where did? Tell me the story because that is completely like not. And then there was the fact that first of all, you almost lost your arm. Yeah. <laughs> but like, it it looks like I almost did, but it was relatively clear. Um, if my pedal hadn't hit the post, I still don't think I would have hit my elbow. But if there was maybe a couple more inches of height in that post, I would have completely smashed my elbow. So that spot came about, that spot's been around San Diego for quite a few years from what I've been told. And I live quite close to it. So I'd ride by it all the time. And I decided just to do the wall ride. And did the wall ride, everything was fine. I thought I'd break through. It seemed like it was kind of a week to pause for the noise. <laughs> I'm pausing for the dog on the, the loader. So I wanted to do the wall ride. I was nervous I'd break through. It seemed like it was you could push it, you know, and it was kind of, there's a little bit out of Out of the bank there. you landed in? Yeah, okay. out, of, out, out of the bank. So got the wall ride done, and then, I don't know, it had maybe had been like a year that had passed since I had thought about it. And I just had a thought of like, I think I might be able to 270 foof that. Because I love doing that on quarters. It's such a fun way to drop in, little 270 foofs, good brake check way, all this stuff. So the downside was I had never been up on that roof. So I had no idea what the edge of that was presenting, any type of obstacle or whatnot. And so what I ended up doing was just asking Fudger, hey, you wanna go do this? Like bring all your stuff, because if it's a go, it's a go. We gotta say hi to these motherfuckers. Right oh here. yeah. Dirty dogs. Say hi to them. I had a good sense that I could probably pull this off, but I didn't know I didn't know what the roof was gonna offer me in terms of obstacles. So just told Fudger, Let's go when you're free. He was free. We showed up. I brought the bike. And I, do I even, did I even climb? Yeah, so I climbed, I climbed up without the bike. Or did I go first? I don't even, I don't even remember. But it was not the most desirable edge. There was about a three inch ledge on it. And then like a tiny little groove. And then it was like single ply top of the roof. But it, there was no way that I could be on the other edge and not. Like I had to be on this skinny little three inch ledge. My it, my foot was too wide for it. So like keep like that's the perspective of what I had to deal with. And so once I was ready to go, I set my bike up there and I had to position my pedals and I put my feet kind of staggered like this to where I was in between my frame. And I would set my pedals up to where right as I put my front foot on my left foot, it was like, you put your right foot on and then you just do a tiny little tap and you're ready to go. And the very first one, I almost hit that pole. Like, I mean, I did hit the pole. What am I saying? I hit the pole 
and it was one of those things where I don't realize how much I yank when I do those, but I yank a lot. Like, like I like go backwards. Yes, yep. I do like a big alley oop pull type thing. Yep. I've even done it on a straight quarter pipe where I've gone up straight, and then I hop and I, for some reason, I yank two feet over. You know, news you always go backwards. It's just yeah, it's just like a like a comfort type thing, and so that yank was kind of freaking me out, and the pull was freaking me out. I'm also I don't know eight nine feet up off the ground, so the scary part was I had to slowly back myself up. And the poles were maybe be a little over a bike length wide. So I had to literally leave where there was a pole directly below me. And that was a very mentally hard thing to overcome because I thought that if I left right there, I would be skewering myself. But the more I backed up, the better the landing was. And so I had to just trust that this is what was gonna happen, you know? And I did it six times, and one time I hit, I hit straight pedal. That's the one that looks the most scary, and it bent my pedal, so I had to get a new pedal put on real quick. And you know, then I went up there, and the seventh time was a charm, and it worked out. And it was a little sketch, but like, you know, Gary Young was there. Gary, Gary, like a, a little while ago, Gary said like, Maddie, you got it. Like you can pull this, and I just was like, wait. Can you say that again for me, Gary, please? Can I really take this in? And so I try to ask Gary to come to all the spots that I'm going to throw myself off because he gives me a lot of confidence. And so I landed it and we looked at the clip and I was like, oh my God, I feel like I could do it better. And Gary's like, you know what, dude? I think that's as good as it's going to get. Like, yeah, you could go make it better and make it perfect, but that has that fear, that thrill, that like just anticipating death, basically. And he's like, I think you should just call it. And I'm like, all right. Whatever Gary says. So two like, tries. No, no, no. Seven oh, tries. Seven. Threw myself off. I thought you said second. Seven. No, seven. Yeah, seven tries. Six tries where first one was like hit the pole, feet blew off. I was like, oh my God. I look back up and I laugh because I laugh when I'm afraid. And then the other few tries were just like one was like I slipped the pedal super hard and just like, come on, let's get this. And then there was the one right before I landed it, the 7-Eleven employee, he like leans out. He's like, don't break your leg. <laughs> and I was like, hey, man, don't say that kind of stuff. Like, I'm going to pull it. But, like, you don't be throwing that kind of thing out in the air. Like, no, I'm not going to break my leg. I'm going to pull this shit. So, shh, be quiet. So, yeah, that's how it went. Wow, man. And, and, and since then, a uh, new owner has bought the building, and they've changed the wall ride spot. They've changed the edge of it to where it's a different texture now, and they put a fence up. So it's, like, completely not even possible anymore. Wow. So I drive by a lot, and I see it, and I just, like, Thank you, Spot. What? Okay, what's that? <laughs> that's, so, a, that's not break related, but I want to know. It's just, there are, and I'm one of them. I was one of them. I feel like I'm trying to grow out of it. There are so many humans that come to spaces that are of inanimate objects, and they think they can dominate the space. And realistically, we're all energy. We're all matter. So why do you think you can just show up to a spot and you can be the the controller of the energy. You need to have respect, you need to give thanks to a spot. You should be grateful that you are in a human body that is able to do these types of moves. And so every time I go to put myself on the line, I kiss my bike and I kiss the spot where I'm either gonna jump off or stall or where I'm gonna land. And I have a dog, I've had a dog now for about six years and I have a little sticker on my frame, it's a little dog paw. And then before I do anything serious, I always kiss the dog paw because I wanna come back to her, you know? She gives me something to kind of think about outside of BMX. It's a nice little philosophical, superstitious, like, yep. Yep. belief thing. I just want to give thanks to the space being in the position that it's in, and I am not here to hurt it. I'm only here to grace it with some weird BMX presence, and I don't want to cause any damage or any issues, so I'm here in a, in a, in a good, energetic way. And so I have to give a little bit of respect to it. You gotta respect that, man. Yeah, it's just something, you know, I just, it's helped me a lot. And I used to kind of get made fun of a little bit for it, but now I'm over, I'm past that. You can make fun of me for anything you want. It's how I feel about it. And the moment that I'm gonna put myself on the line, I literally think about giving thanks to stuff. Not just myself, not just to my health, but to the space, to the crazy architects that built this, who had no idea what was gonna potentially be done. So thank you for not even knowing, but building this wild setup. Yeah. So how do you feel about all of the people who are starting to ride brakes? I think it's amazing. Dennis put brakes on. Dennis is doing sub-fufa news. Yeah. 
It's so good. I saw him the other day pull up to the park and I saw his cable. I was like, I love that cable. I love it. It's great, you know? The moment I saw Chase throw him back on, it was like, yes, this is perfect. Bring it on. It's going to be, there's going to be a wave of people trying it again, you know? And awesome. Bring it on, man. Like, there's, there used to be kind of a weird thing with a lot of people would be like, oh, I, you, you, we used to do that. Or like, you know, like we've been doing that forever and you're just now catching on. It's like, nah, man, let people go through ebbs and flows. Let things change. Let preferences move and navigate through different aspects of riding. Put more brakes on. I've done the front brake thing. I've tried that and it scared the shit out of me. And sorry if I can't cuss. It scared me. Oh, you're fine. Okay. And it scared me like crazy. I, uh, Dirt Ron gave me a pair of forks because my forks were shot. And he said, you have to run the front brakes though. And I was like, deal, I'll run them for three months. And I did a tabletop on like the second session I had them. And I didn't realize how much my hand comes off and it got stuck in between the lever. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what to do. And I told Ron, I have to take them off. I 100% can't do this. If I can't do a tabletop the way I'm used to, so experiment, have fun with it. That's why I have two, I have a front brake bike. Yeah. Because riding trails with a front brake, dude, tire grabs, tucks, yeah. anything where you take off that hand yeah. and bring it back when you're not used to having that second lever there, yeah. it's death. It's scary. And there's a lot of people who do it really well Yeah. get used to it. I'm not one of those people. Me neither. Me neither. More, more, more power to them because that's mm -hmm. incredible. Yeah. Anything else to say about brakes while we're here? Just don't be afraid of them. You know? Don't be afraid of them and find other ways to have fun. And if you want to add brakes to your bike, let's do it. Hell yeah. Break into the break into the scene. <laughs> break into the scene. Let's start to break out of this interview. Break out of the norm and break into the scene. <laughs> Where can people find you online, man? Uh, Ratty Matty, R-A-T-T-Y-M-A-T-Y. And yeah, you search that out, you'll probably find a lot more stuff than you. The video is in the description. Thank Watch you very the video. Much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Enjoy.